I think a lot of people take it personally when you say, don't do this, don't make this kind of game. And realistically, it's more just weathered advice, you know? Like, I don't want to feel like, I'm not saying don't make X game, all, all memes aside, what I really mean in most of these cases is you will cause yourself some harm in some way, shape or form if you don't pay attention to the advice out there. And the main advice is small cycles, learn from it and grow from it. And if you if you do jump into a large project without the prerequisite experience, you'll just blink one day and realize you've lost years of your life on a project that may not go where you thought it would go. And it may not be as successful as you thought. And it's like, take a risk, fine, but don't, you know, don't put all your cards in in one go and hope for the best when you can, what, what, what's the phrase? It's uh, your luck is luck, luck favors the prepared or something. So you know, prepare. Don't don't gamble with no experience. Build up to the point where you want to be. You know. Yeah, one of my favorite quotes, and I, I think this is in the same spirit, is uh, luck is is when opportunity meets preparation. So it's kind of like if you're working on the same project, if you're if you work on a single project, then the only opportunities you're ever going to get are around that single project, and obviously. It might not be there might not be any uh, opportunities, especially if it's in a genre or something that a niche or something, uh, a category of game that is no longer in fashion, you know, and that happens. You know, some games are more fashionable now. Battle Royale games are really popular. I think they're still popular. But, uh, you know, five years ago, they weren't. And five years from now, they might they might not be. So you might you might say, I'm going to make a Battle Royale game. It's 2019. You get to work. Let's say you do make it and you do complete it and it takes you two years and, and you want to launch it in 2022, maybe 2023. Battle Royale games may not be fun anymore. So you prepared and, and you created this game, but now the opportunity has passed. By working on many different uh, types of games and, and, and smaller games, you can get more out there. You're, you're preparing yourself more because you're experiencing more uh, problems and, and finding solutions to things that come up as you develop. And you're creating more opportunities for yourself. Like, I think we talked about this before. The guy who made Flappy Bird, he made like, like I don't want to say hundreds, but he, he made tens of, of mobile games that were just small. Yeah, I think he's games. literally had, I think it was around 40, like 30 or 40. Like, it was quite a lot of games. Quite a lot of games. And, and yeah, and it was just Flappy Bird happened to hit. I don't know why. No one knows why. He doesn't even know. Um, what do you think about this, Jason? What do you think about developing really impressive vertical slices? And, like, that's your thing. You're like, hey, I'm not going to make finished games but i'm gonna make a uh that's a great way to get hired as opposed to a great way to make games but it, it does work um like I, I think i think that kind of thing works great if your job is to basically do what we're doing now if your job is to get a portfolio of, of people like mix and jam is amazing like look at mix and jam youtube oh, channel. yeah yeah absolutely it's it's fantastic they're basically you know picking mechanics and making effectively mechanical vertical slices of games and that's a great way to get people engaged in what you're doing um but one, one thing that's similar to what you were saying about uh, a genre not being popular anymore is one of the quest, one of the questions was uh, thoughts on hyper-casual games versus idle games. And that's a very good example of what you were saying. Idle games aren't popular anymore. They're, they're definitely, they were a, a, a fad. I'm not saying they don't exist, but for a while with Cookie Clicker being the predominant leader at the time, um, those kind of games really had an explosion where everyone would play them. And personally, not a fan, I, but I get why they exist and you know they but the, the point isn't so much whether i play them or not or whether someone else does it's what's their value as a product to make and right now there's not that much interest it's more of a meme game or anything else um but the opposite being hyper casual games that's the opposite that's currently super on trend hyper casual games are really popular they're i think they're actually three of the top five on most app stores at the moment i can't remember mm. but um if you want to make money right now hyper casual is the way to go really short find an engaging game loop, or as someone else also pointed out in the chat, steal one from an older game. It doesn't matter if you're basically effectively remaking Pong or remaking Tetris or remaking Breakout. Uh, put a spin on it, you know, add a timer, or change change the, um, the, the, the rotational uh, approach of it. Like even if you just add, make it 3D, make it, it doesn't matter what you do. Um, if you can make something that can latch, that people can latch onto for a few minutes and play one-handed, that's how you, that's if you want to make games I don't want to say cynically, but that's how you can be pragmatic about making money from games. Um, uh, but so yeah, they're they're popular now. But again, just like everything else, they're not going to last forever. They're not going to be the good. They're not a new genre per se, like people think they might be. But it is a new. Um, <clears throat> it's a current trend that is a good way to earn money at the moment. So yeah, yeah, it's interesting too. Um, you can almost tell what's what's in style game wise if you watch a lot of YouTube videos and you see 
um, sometimes you'll see like Unity Udemy courses, like advertisements. And, and I remember seeing a, a, a Udemy course advertised that was for that, for how to make a, a, a mobile game that was like, what was it called? What was it called? Like super casual, ultra casual? Oh, hyper casual. Hyper yeah. casual. Yeah, yeah. It was like, make a hyper casual game. Take my Udemy course. And it's like, oh, I guess that's what's popular right now. Yeah. Oh, no, I, I would I would kind of uh, disagree with the, with the the idea that they're going to take over. I, and some people think they do, and that's, that's fine. A, a lot of stuff is trending that way. But in the same way everything's trending to open world right now, there's open world fatigue, and we can all feel it. Like as great as Breath of the Wild was and as great as it is to have these giant open worlds, there's this pushback where people are just not interested anymore. And Hyper Casual is really good a while ago. Um, and it's still got some legs. People still like them, but there's this sense of losing engagement with content and uh, people are getting very um, socially aware of the dismissiveness of social media. You know, people are not engaging anymore and there's going to be a pushback socially on that too. So if I was to put money on it, I would recommend leaning into engaging content games going forward uh, maybe now do some hyper casual but like if, if your angle is to make a game in two years time i'm going to bet narrative games and really detailed mechanic games are going to be what kicks off in two years time and that's something to that's something to bring up no one really knows what the next fad is going to be there are people who have the pulse on the industry um, and maybe history will sort of repeat itself, so that kind of can be an indicator, but you just don't know what's going to be popular. Who, who knew Battle Royale games were going to be as popular as they became? Um, but the people who hit it first, like PUBG was one of the first, um, I believe. Don't quote me on that. Um, yeah, yeah, it was definitely the one that popularized the genre. Yeah, so, I mean, he, he, the the guy who created that game, uh, player unknown, I guess he. Uh, it's not like he knew battle royale games were going to be big, and he was like, "I'm going to capitalize on this." No, he just really liked making that type of game. I think it started as a mod, and uh, and then he just well, he was lucky. You know, he was prepared, and an opportunity rose, and it they just clashed, and boom, there you go. So, and that that's that whole thing with luck. You know, you just and, and creating smaller projects. You know, the more experience you have making smaller projects. Um, you just experiment, try different types of styles of games. Um, you're going to be in a better position to take advantage of a fad if it does come up in the future. You can say, hey, look, you know what? This this thing became popular. I actually made a, a little vertical slice about the same st style of game. Maybe I can iterate on that, and then you'll be one of the first to uh, to hit a fad or a trend. So just some, some food for thought. Not not that you should go around think, you know creating games thinking maybe I'll get lucky and <laughs> blow up, but... You know, it's just uh, something to consider. Thank you.